Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our presentation, ArcGIS for Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, we're going to call this GIS for non-GIS users and also for GIS users who want to bridge the gap between geospatial data and the design world. This is the first time we've been at this conference and we're honored to be here and we just have a couple of questions. Um, how many of you are graphic designers, digital, uh, digital artists, visualization specialists? <laughs> awesome. <One>. And, uh, <laughs> two, two. and uh, how many of you um, occasionally have to pretend to be graphic designers and create visual content? Ah. <laughs> awesome. You are my target audience. <laughs> All right. So as I'm sure you know, Adobe is the creative leader in visual. Sorry, I'm going to have to read my cards a little bit. Uh, Adobe is a creative. Uh, a, Sorry. As I'm sure you know, we're not usually talkers, we're drawers, so it's going to be a struggle to get here, but we'll get there. Adobe is the creative leader uh, for visual content software, so chances are, if you're creating visual content, you are already using the Adobe program, whether that be Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, or one of the many others. Adobe already creates these very uh, robust programs, but if you're wanting to take your GIS to the next level, you're going to want this plugin. And once you have it installed in your Adobe uh, suite, it functions just like any other palette inside Adobe. It's, it's very functional and it's very easy to use. So in our presentation, we're going to share our own experiences with ArcGIS extension. In this case, we're going to be focusing on Photoshop because that's sort of our Adobe uh, program of choice. If we did more graphic design than we did visualization, we would probably be focusing on Illustrator because that's vector based, but we seem to spend our time in the raster world and that's Photoshop. So let's get started. Okay, so before jumping into the extension and how we use it, uh, we want to discuss the why. Uh, why it's significant to bridge the, desi the design world with the GIS world and, uh, and why is visual content important? Uh, what type of graphics and visualizations we see in the AEC industry? Um, the challenges we faced in our workflow that led to the discovery of this extension and how it positively impacted uh, the way in which we produce graphics today. Uh, then we're going to discuss the case study and then finally we're going to go over how you can download it and uh, get more information on it. So, oh good lord. So <laughs> first, <laughs> I'm going to have some introductions. Uh, I'm Karen Bauer. I uh, currently work for a federal agency, but I also perform GIS uh, duties for the, well, consulting for the AEC industry. Uh, I have a background in GIS and I have a master's of engineering specializing in GIS. Uh, this is Gina Bauer. She works for, uh, she's a visualization specialist and she works for Moffitt and Nickel Engineering. Uh, they are a um, environmental, structural, civil, uh, they perform many different uh, disciplines. Um, so let's see, she holds a degree in fine arts and also specialized in 3D modeling and animating. So Gina is, uh, well, let's see, I already said that. <laughs> so it's not a coincidence that we have the same last name. Uh, we're both sisters and uh, happened into the same kind of industry. So although the left brain, right brain whole theory has been debunked, it kind of holds true in our family. Uh, I'm definitely the analytical, mathematical person, and she is the uh, creative one in the family. I say the brains and the beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, so the one thing that we have in common is that we're both visual people, and uh, we're always looking for a more compelling way to tell our story. So bridging the gap is what uh, the ArcGIS for Creative Cloud extension does. It connects the GIS technical world with the um, design world. And uh, um, by why this, uh, but why this connection between these two uh, environments uh, is Im important, and we're gonna discuss that, and then also how important uh, visual content is anyway. So it's very important, as all of y'all know. Uh, uh, these are a few of our favorite stats. Uh, you might be looking at this, 65% of us are all visual learners, or maybe our brains process visuals 60,000 times faster than text. But our personal favorite is uh, people can follow instructions 323% better when visuals are used. 
Uh, Ikea, anybody? If anybody's ever put together Ikea furniture, you remember that uh, we can all speak fluent uh, Swedish. (laughs) So visuals and graphics can be interpreted differently by different people. Powerful graphics tell a story. In the engineering world, this is a stunning graphic. But unless you're submitting drawings to a builder uh, and you look past the dimensions, it's really not telling much of a story. What if I tell you I want you to focus on the wharf's C curb and that there is a backflow preventer before the storm, storm vault, uh, storm vault. <laughs> and that uh, I want you to understand how important those two elements are to this location in case of a sea level rise. With the help of graphics, I can focus your attention on the important features of this project. All the extraneous information has been removed, the drawing has been enhanced, the callouts are minimal, but the message is clear. Same content, different level of graphical interpretation. So these are other types of visual content we create in the AEC industry. Uh, Renderings, photo simulations, cross sections, cutaways, infographics, and even those, these may not look like ArcGIS, there's ArcGIS content in every single one of these images in the way of aerials, utility information, map overlays, features, layers and layers of information to create these kinds of visual content. So this is us. And this is them. (laughs) I don't know if anybody's ever gotten the uh, side eye, the prairie dog side eye from your PM. So we've established how important dynamic visual content is and I've just convinced my PM that he needs to invest in his graphics. But he may not have first thought about this and therefore he may not have allocated any budget or time. And let's face it, graphics are subjective, time-consuming budget crushers. That is so true. And why does this happen? Well, I've got a couple of things that happened to me over and over again. And one of them was whenever I was looking for data, I was going on wild goose chases to all these different websites to try to get the information that I needed to create my visuals. And uh, let's hope that I can remember every username and password for all these sites. And then when I couldn't find any information there, I would turn towards the person next to me in the other department and ask him to help me to also look for data. Now I've taken him off of his project and we're both looking for data. And by the time I get it, a lot of times it's not in a format which I can use. So I'll have to take it through all these different programs to convert it into some kind of file that I can open up in my program. And by that time, the data might have lost its integrity. So, I've made this face a lot. How can, how can I help you? You need to help me. So we had these questions. Um, we needed to acquire the data to create the visualization. We wanted to limit the amount of people who were working on the same thing at the same time. We wanted to reduce the software in order to streamline the workflow. And most importantly, we wanted to keep the cost down to save time. So we decided to look at our graphics in different groups, try to find a common denominator. Here are four types of graphics. Uh, In the upper left-hand corner, every now and then I do get to draw and I get to create these really fun uh, artistic covers for reports, presentations, and whatnot. And then of course there's map data and pretty much any document that leaves our company, so we do a lot of mapping, a lot of visual mapping, I should say. And in the lower left-hand corner, uh, visualization in the way of renderings, photo simulations, animations, and that type of things. And then more technical visualization, cross-sections and cutaways. We looked at the software that we were using to create these types of graphics also InfraWorks and Civil 3D and other types that I haven't included. But we noticed that with all these types of of, uh, graphics, there was two things that always seemed to come up. And one of those was GIS information, always in Photoshop. So we wanted to figure out a way, if there was some, some way to combine these two worlds. And what we learned is, Esri was already working on it. So I don't know how we found this uh, extension. We might have been beta testing, I don't know, but we plugged it into Photoshop. It came in really easy. You're able to get to this extension simply from the Windows tab to the extension tab. And I just got a couple of uh, screenshots here so that you can kind of get an idea of it. I should have made a video, but I ran out of time. In the upper left-hand corner, that is the map board, and that's what comes up when you access the uh, extension. It looks a lot like uh, ArcGIS Online. 
on the uh, right side of that, in the second window, you can see that uh, it's really easy to change base maps, just like you can with any ArcGIS. In the lower left-hand corner, I've already constrained an aspect ratio of the area that I, I'm interested in, and it's Long Beach, that's my home city, and I've labeled the map uh, VLB. So after I've decided on the area that I want to focus on, then the next window pops up and it's the compilation window. From here is where I add all my layers. So I don't think you can tell by the resolution, but I've got bathymetry layers, I've added a street map, and I believe uh, uh, zip codes, I'm pretty sure. So that brought us to this step. We wanted to try out this really, really cool extension on a project, and this is the project that came up, the New Orleans Municipal Yacht Harbor Redevelopment Project. So this is a marina and a facilities that's on the south side of Lake Pontchartrain, Pontchartrain in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and it had 600 slips uh, before, <laughs> before it was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina, about three-fourths of the, of the slips were destroyed. And uh, as funding negotiations and decisions about what to do with the site dragged on, it was hit again by Hurricane Isaac, unfortunately, in 2012, and damaged additional slips, as well as taking out the water and the electricity. So fortunately, Moffat Nickel uh, was awarded the project, and discussions began immediately on improving the site. Most importantly, this site, because of where it's located, it needed to have a floating dock system with wave attenuation. Of course, it needed, uh, it needed to be durable enough to survive a large category hurricane larger than Katrina. It needed additional entry points, and uh, there was an eastern bulkhead that needed to be rehabilitated, and it definitely needed to meet uh, ADA requirements. So this is how the marina looked like uh, prior to the hurricanes. So even when it was a functioning marina, it, it still, it, it was pretty sparse and it wasn't utilizing the space very well. And here is our proposed master plan. I'm just calling out a couple of, of key features, the two entry points, a community sailing center, which I'll discuss a little bit later, uh, that east bulkhead that needed to be rehabilitated. So here's where we come in. Moffat Nickel had an aggressive timeline as well did the city of Newport, Newport Beach, of New Orleans, <laughs> sorry, wrong city. And it was critical for us to produce clear, convincing visualizations uh, of the final design for stakeholders, city officials, and the public. My sister likes to call it the buy-in and, and the build-it. And of course, there's our prairie dog again telling me that both tasks need to happen simultaneously and work in a tight time frame with a limited budget. So this is the solution we came up with in order to do both of those tasks simultaneously. I knew I was going to be getting CAD plans from AutoCAD, Revit, uh, some from Civil 3D models from Revit, and I'm going to bring these into our 3D program of choice, which is 3D Max, and we're using V-Ray to render. And then on the rastered side, I knew I was going to be building my materials, and uh, I had the Arial in Photoshop. And this time, we were going to utilize the ArcGIS plugin, which we were very excited about. So with this method, we were able to create graphics for the technical meetings uh, between the city officials, engineers, and designers, as well as the visualization for community and uh, outreach meetings, stakeholders, organizations, members, and guests of the marinas and the surrounding facilities. It actually worked very well, and it, it, it cut our time down considerably. And this was sort of an added bonus we, we found out. Since we were able to create the layered files in uh, Photoshop so easily using this extension, we could actually bring the Photoshop into our 3D program, and by using the layers without having to save out individual files, we could change the, uh, the material just simply by clicking through the different layers of the Photoshop file. So this is a 3D Max, and I have the perspective viewport in the background. So just by clicking through, I'm able to change it. And this is all real time, so it's very simple. I could also just set a camera in there, animate an orbit. Just was a great little added benefit. And then I'm just going to show you a couple of uh, renderings of the, the finished site. It's actually half built, and they're working on the second half, so they've really been able to progress fast. This is the east entrance, um, showing the sailing center in the distance. That's the light green building. 
And then um, this is the restroom and storage facilities. There is the ADA ramp in the background. You can't really see it that well. This is the uh, west gate, and we're going to have this lovely arch when it's all completed to welcome sailors. And this is one of the, the main docks, and there you can see the fingers with the floating dock system underneath, which is so important. And this is a view looking uh, east. And this is the all-important sailing center. The nonprofit organization, uh, Community Sailing for New Orleans, um, has, uh, is, is building this, this beautiful center, and it's going to provide an avenue for disadvantaged and handicapped kids to get introduced to sailing. And Moffat Nickel was fortunate enough to assist this nonprofit organization in creating renderings used in meetings to solicit donations. And to this date, they've raised enough money uh, to build their bulkhead, install fill, install a trailer, purchase floating docks and boats. And I'm also including a link just in case you want to find out more about the sailing center. And of course, most importantly, happy customers. Uh, City of New Orleans was uh, happy with the project and, and all our meetings. And, and of course, we, we were happy that we satisfied the stakeholders and everybody else. It was a success. <laughs> So that's the end of our presentation. I'm just putting up a couple of links here. This is a really long uh, web address, but it's very easy to find this extension. You just search for um, Arc Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. If you already have Adobe, then you probably have the Adobe Exchange, and you can search for the extension there. And I've also included the email uh, to the developers in case you have any questions or suggestions for them. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. And then also uh, my sisters and my email address. Fe feel free to reach out to us if there's any questions we can answer about the app. Um, we're, we're not even fully using this app to you know its, its extent. We're just very excited to uh, continue working with it and, and see it develop. So. Thank you. That's all we have to say. Oh, I should mention that the app is completely free. So if this sounds like a big, a big sell, it's <laughs> not. It, it really is just a, a huge benefit to graphic designers and visualization specialists. Thank you. <laughs>